Good afternoon, everybody. Dr. Michael Jacobs here from the Fertility and IVF Center in Miami for a Monday afternoon Instagram chat. Today's topic is fertility when BRCA positive. And the BRCA mutation, the BRCA gene exists in everybody, but when you have mutations in the BRCA gene, this can predispose to certain types of cancer, particularly breast and ovarian cancer, uh, and in, in men's sometimes prostate cancer as well. So the concern is what to do when these are positive and how do you manage this? And I'm not gonna spend the time talking about breast cancers and the decisions to be made. If you remember Angelina Jolie, uh, became very uh, prominent as a, a proponent of, of BRCA and BRCA testing and had a prophylactic mastectomy done. And these are individual considerations for uh, if you have a, an abnormal BRAC mutation, uh, what do you do about it and so forth. Obviously increased medical surveillance is the uh, main part of any uh, evaluation and treatment to make sure you don't have or develop uh, these cancers that are associated with the gene. And in patients that are considering treatment such as uh, 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 ovarian uh, removal as a prophylactic measure, uh, the question is obviously, how do you preserve fertility or what do you do to get pregnant prior to doing that? And so most people will recommend that you get pregnant sooner and then after you finish childbearing, considering more definitive surgery. And in the case of preventing ovarian cancer, it would be removing the ovaries and tubes. Uh, but what do we do to try and help you have a healthy baby uh, if you're carrying a, a BRCA mutation? Because obviously, first, understand the genetics of how this is transmitted. The BRCA mutation is a uh, autosomal dominant uh, gene mutation, which means unlike many of the uh, uh, diseases that we follow, which are recessive in nature and requires you getting an abnormal gene from both the mother and the father to have an abnormal embryo or be abnormal, and you can hide the expression of the gene. With the BRCA mutation, this is dominant. So you only need one copy of it to be at high risk of having a problem. Now, not everybody exhibits all the symptoms or has a problem with, with, with it. Just because you have a BRCA mutation doesn't mean that you're going to get breast cancer or ovarian cancer, but you are more likely to. And so, obviously, as, as if you're a woman with the BRCA mutation and you're going to have a family, one of the things that you would like to do, is similar to any mutation, is to have a child that's not going to be affected and not have to deal with the same concerns and dilemmas and decisions that you have to make having this particular abnormality. So if you have a dominant genetic mutation present, the assumption is that it's present on one of the two chromosomes that match. Remember, we each have 23 sets of chromosomes. So in one of those chromosomes, one of the genes is abnormal. And when you go to pass that set of chromosomes off to the next generation, whether it be in the formation of a sperm or the formation of an egg, one of the chromosomes is going to be normal and one of them is going to be abnormal. So uh, if uh, uh, the uh, so there's a if you're passing a mutation to a future generation, there's going to be a 50% chance <coughs> that that abnormal gene is going to be present. And so, what can we do about this? Uh, obviously, for many years, nobody did anything, and you just found out after the fact. You, you know, you tested the person, you found it okay, the baby is carrying the BRCA mutation and just needs to be aware of it and to be treated no different than the mom in this case. But we can do genetic testing with, with what is referred to as pre-implantation genetic testing for single gene mutation testing. And by doing that, we can identify which embryos in an IVF arena have a normal gene and which one has an abnormal gene. So if we just backtrack a little bit to IVF in general, remember 
There are multiple steps to in vitro fertilization. Uh, with the first step, you're producing eggs. The eggs are then removed and fertilized in the dish. The embryo is uh, formed by the fertilization of the egg with the sperm and allowing those embryos to develop over five or six days. On the fifth and sixth day of development, these embryos now look like a little soccer ball under the microscope. They contain 50 to 70 cells. It has an inner cell mass, which becomes the baby eventually, and the outer cell mass, which is the placental cells. And what you can do at that point before you transfer an embryo back is you can biopsy the cells on the outer surface of the embryo and do pre-implantation genetic testing. And by biopsying those cells, you biopsy a few of the cells, you freeze the embryo, and then you send those cells off to a genetics laboratory for analysis. Now, the most common thing that is analyzed when you biopsy an embryo is the presence of aneuploidy. And that's to see whether the embryo itself has the correct number of chromosomes. And if the, if the embryo does not have the correct number of chromosomes, it really doesn't matter what else you're testing for. It's not a normal embryo. <clears throat> we wouldn't consider using it. So if the embryo has the correct number of chromosomes, you can then test for a specific gene abnormality, in this case, the BRCA mutation. The genetics lab needs to know that beforehand. You can't sort of dial them up and say, by the way, test for X, Y, and Z, because we just want that tested for. They have to be able to identify the specific mutation that's present. And the way they do that is to develop what's called a probe. And the probe is developed based on the DNA of the parents, basically. So they would the genetics lab, before we do the IVF, they would, we would send them some DNA from the mother or the father who have a carious abnormality. And yes, men can have BRCA mutations too, and they are more at risk for uh, breast cancer and prostate cancer. So the, uh, we send the DNA, they identify the mutation, they develop a probe which they can use to then identify the abnormal DNA from the fetal cells that we biopsy, which are these future placental cells from the outer membrane, the, the syncytial trophoblasts of the embryo, basically. And it will identify which embryos are containing the abnormal mutation and which embryos are not. And statistically, in this particular case, because it's a dominant mutation, we're going to see that 50% of the embryos are affected and 50% aren't. And you don't always get an exact split 50-50. Uh, it, it may be 60-40, it may be 70-30. If you biopsied enough embryos, it'd come out to 50-50. But in an individual with five embryos, you may see it slightly imbalanced. But in general, you'd expect half of the embryos to be acceptable and half of them to carry the mutation. And obviously, we wouldn't recommend transferring the embryos that carry the mutation. Uh, those are no different than mom and dad was, but the whole reason you're doing this in the first place is to avoid putting those back. So by biopsying the embryos, checking to see whether they carry the mutation or not, you can then select out the embryos that do not carry the mutation, and it would be an extremely remote possibility that that embryo and baby that resulted would be affected or carry that mutation, having been shown that it's with 98% accuracy that it's, it's an unaffected embryo. So it's really a, a pretty simple concept. You have a disease, in this case, BRCA mutation testing. You identify a probe for it, and from a fertility standpoint, it's pretty simple. We just have to do IVF with pre-implantation genetic testing, and we test the embryo for the genetic abnormality. The embryos that do not carry the mutation are the embryos that are acceptable to transfer back into your uterus. And a embryo that tests negative with 98% plus probability is going to result in a 
baby that does not have the abnormality that was tested for. So that's the beauty of it. That's the benefit of what we're trying to do. And particularly in a mutation like BRCA mutation testing, it's very valuable because without that, half of the embryos are going to be potentially resulting in a BRCA positive baby and a, a person that now has to deal with the same considerations that a parent does uh, with uh, uh, being at an increased risk of breast and ovarian cancer and what do I do about that and how do I manage it and when, when do I do it. From a standpoint of getting pregnant <clears throat> and having a baby, the other major advantage of this is that you know, if, if you believe in the concept of prophylactic uh, mastectomy or oophrectomy, uh, meaning breasts or ovaries being removed to try and minimize the risk of developing these cancers, obviously the question is at what point do you do it? The earlier you do it in life, the less chance of developing these cancers there is. The later you do it in life, the more chance you'll develop a cancer uh, and have to deal with that diagnosis and treatment per se. So the other major advantage, particularly for people in their late 20s uh, and stuff that have not gotten married, that have not had children, you can use IVF as both a means of uh, fertility preservation as well as a, a means of diagnosing these embryos. And you know, if, if, the woman is the, if the woman is the one carrying the BRCA mutation and you're worried about the concerns of uh, getting ovarian cancer and you want to have your ovaries removed to prevent this from happening, then you need to do, consider fertility preservation. And when you get into fertility preservation, the question is, do we freeze eggs or do we freeze embryos? If you have a partner that's readily available to conceive the eggs with and create embryos, and this is the person you want to have children with down the road, then freezing embryos is always the better approach. But most women who are in this dilemma probably don't have that. And in that case, freezing eggs is valuable. Now, you can't test the eggs to see if they have the BRCA mutation or not, but you can cryopreserve eggs now, and when you fertilize these eggs at a future date and grow the embryos, you can then test the embryos for the BRCA mutation. So the use of in vitro fertilization technologies uh, and methodologies apply to both the person who has the BRCA mutation that's wanting to get pregnant now, this is a way to avoid having a baby that also has that mutation. It's also a good, it's also a good uh, concept from a fertility preservation standpoint for the individual that is uh, not wanting to have a child right now but wants to be able to not have to worry about being infertile because you took your ovaries out down the road. And for that person, egg freezing becomes extremely important. And even though we can only test the embryo for the abnormality, preserving your eggs now gives you the opportunity to use these eggs later, let the embryos develop, biopsy the embryos, freeze them, and then put the embryos back that are healthy once the genetics is known. So we can still use the technology, whether you're trying to have a baby now or you want to have a baby in the future. The only difference is, the only difference is, are we cryopreserving uh, eggs, which will be tested later, or are we cryopreserving embryos, which are tested now? Once you have the embryos or the eggs frozen, it's really a matter of, of convenience when you want to use them. You don't have to use them today, next week, next month, even next year. Once they're frozen, these biologic uh, 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 material can stay frozen for years and years and years. So it, it takes away a lot of the pressure of, of what do I do now? 
Uh, you can preserve that fertility for the future. If you need to do genetic testing, uh, please be aware that, you know, it's a little bit of a numbers game. Remember from previous talks, the, the more eggs you have, the more good quality embryos we're going to get, and the more of those embryos are going to be normal. And if one is thinking of this as a fertility preservation uh, factor, rather than I don't want to get pregnant now, I want to get pregnant later, remember the things you need to consider in trying to determine, okay, how many embryos do I need or how many eggs do I need frozen to feel good that I'm going to have a healthy baby down the road? It depends on your age and what other factors exist. If you're just trying to freeze eggs and you're 34 years old, if you've got 20 eggs in the freezer, that's probably good. But if you're 34 years old and you have a BRCA mutation, and we know that of the embryos that eventually form, forgetting about the ones that are aneuploid to start with, but half of the embryos that are good embryos from a standpoint of having the correct number of chromosomes that are euploid embryos, if we know half of those embryos are not going to be acceptable for use because they're going to have a BRCA mutation, then you got to double that number. And instead of 20 eggs, you want to have 40 eggs. So you need to consider these things when, when trying to analyze, okay, not just what do I do to, to make sure I have a healthy baby or preserve my fertility, but how to do it in a way where at the, at the end of the day, the outcome that I would like is one that hopefully we'll, we'll be able to provide to you. So I hope this has been helpful. You know, in short summary, uh, the BRCA mutation, just like any mutation, is one that you can identify genetically. You can do pre-implantation genetic testing of embryos to identify it. The difference between the BRCA mutation and a lot of other mutations are because it's a dominant gene, you only need one copy of it to have an abnormal uh, uh, issue. And because of that, half of the embryos are going to be not acceptable for use rather than 25%, which is what it would be in a recessive uh, genetic mutation. If you're trying to get pregnant now, this is a great mechanism to select uh, the best embryos, the ones that are very unlikely to be affected or carry the mutation to have a healthy baby. And not only a healthy baby, but when that baby grows up and is an adult, does not have to face the same difficult decisions that you do if you're carrying a mutation. And the uh, last is if pregnancy is not desired right now, this is still an option that's available in the form of oocyte freezing and if cryopreservation of eggs. The, the thing to think about here and to realize that we want to be able to cryopreserve twice the number of eggs that we normally would because when you go to use these eggs, the embryos, half of them are not going to be acceptable. So we just have to put those things into the equation to know how to counsel you and so forth. And I hope this has been uh, helpful both from the BRCA mutation directly as well as any genetic mutation, the same basic concepts apply. So if you have questions, please let us know. If we could be of help to you, please let us know. Stay safe and have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.